I feel like I've always been honest with you about sets. I like to focus on the positives while being realistic about playability. If something isn't good anywhere but limited, I tell you. If it won't see standard play, I like to tell you. Let me be clear here. Ether Revolt is the single best and most powerful constructed set printed in the last five years, maybe even longer. No, I am not being hyperbolic. No, I am not exaggerating. We have a crap load of videos coming out because previews are flying left and right and trust me, you will see exactly what I see. So without further ado, we have to jump right in, there's no time to waste, let's do this thing. Metallic Mimic is 2 mana for a 2-1 artifact creature shapeshifter. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. The Mimic is the chosen type in addition to its other types. Each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Wait, that means, no, 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 animation module, and this card named Servo, get a Servo on the battlefield, triggers the Mimic, triggers the module, triggers the Mimic, oh no, no, this is like Thopter Sword combo in Modern, but way more unruly and downright disgusting, you've got to be kidding me, and I'm sorry, but unless I'm missing something, there's no way that this is going to be that difficult to put together, holy crap on a stick, we're already off the rails here, Ether Revolt just doesn't even make sense. Wow, this doesn't even talk about how the Mimic is another tribal staple in casual and commander decks. There's also that. There goes the neighborhood for sure. Peacekeeper Colossus is 3 mana for a 6-6 six, six artifact vehicle with crew 4. You can pay 1 white and 1 of anything and another target vehicle you control becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. Say hello to the vehicle that lets other vehicles crew themselves. For only 2 mana, and it doesn't even have to tap, you can turn all your cars on. That is not bad. Also, if need be, you can activate this, make something else a creature, then use that to crew the 6-6 for 3 mana that's just sitting there. Definitely not the most powerful card we're looking at today in this video, but certainly a good place to start. I mean, Colossus plus Lupine Prototype? Come on, that is just dirty. Untethered Express is 4 mana for a 4-4 vehicle with Trample and Crew 1. Whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Let's ignore the crazy powerful limited card here and focus on the only reason this card is in the video. That artwork. Everyone, it's a rhino train! It's a train! That's also a rhinoceros! Aethervolt design team, you win the internet, I'm done, I can't even right now. It's a rhino train, it's like mechanical Jumanji. 100%, 10 out of 10 winning, amazing. Ornithopter is back in standard. Is this real life? Is this just fantasy? Ornithopter is making its triumphant return to standard, and oh baby, that art is looking fine. We'll add this to the list of masterpieces that are in the set. We're gonna thop all day and all night. We're just gonna thop forever, yes. Sram Senior Edificer is 2 mana for a 2-2 legendary creature dwarf advisor. Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, draw a card. Okay. I don't know if you understand what's happening here, but Saram is absolutely absurd. Look at it this way. He's monocolored, amazing for commander, and draws on cast. Not enter the battlefield, not resolution of the spell, cast. That's the easiest card advantage I've seen in a long time on this type of creature. Remember Pure Steel Paladin? That dude is hugely popular in commander for a reason. It draws from all the equipment. And while it will still assuredly be used, Sram is just straight up easier to cast, casts a much wider net, and is usable in Voltron decks, vehicle strategies, and equipment based decks. Seriously, casting the widest net possible. This could easily be a commander, the card advantage cannot be ignored. If not that, then assuredly Kemba, or Ural, or Dapala. This is going to garner commander attention forever. Sram's expertise is 2 of anything and 2 white for a sorcery. Create three 1-1 one, one servo tokens. You may cast a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Uh, okay. This is clearly a cycle. We had Yeheni first, now this? The cycle's just great, too. The expertise not only lets you cast Saram himself, which is just beautiful, but it also lets you cast anything at three or lower. That means three mana planeswalkers, that means any oath you have, that means removal, it means anything. 4 mana for 3 one ones and a free spell? Yeah, that's constructed playable. Where are my token players at? War of Invention is X and triple blue for an instant with Improvise. Search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. 
uh, reshape, we meet again. Now, of course, it isn't the same ability, but holy crap, War provides you with something that most artifact tutors only dream of. Direct, onto the battlefield awesomeness. This is straight up Court of Calling for artifacts, or at least as close as we're going to get. Its playability in Constructed has yet to be seen, of course, but the real attention being paid to this card does come from Commander. It's not every day you get an efficient artifact tutor like this. Whether or not it sees play in Standard, at least we know it has a home somewhere. What a bonkers tutor. Brea, Sidri, Arkham Daxon. This set's already looking so wank for EDH. New mechanic time, Fatal Push is one black mana for an instant. Destroy target creature if it has converted mana cost 2 or less, Revolt. Destroy that creature if it has converted mana cost 4 or less, instead if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, I... what? Are you serious? Okay, let me be just absolutely clear when I say this. Fatal Push is beyond ridiculous. Not only is it impossible to make it more efficient at 1 mana instant speed, but even without Revolt, it takes out a slew of crap you don't like. That's already fine. But with Revolt, 4 converted mana cost. For 1 mana at instant speed, do you want to know how difficult it is to get the Revolt Clause? Let's look at Modern. Fetch lands. Do you realize how easy it's going to be to cast this stupid thing with Revolt in Modern? Say hello to the newest removal staple in the format that will at least attempt to slow the format down a little bit. I mean, the list this thing destroys is astronomically long. Name a strong creature in Modern with Revolt, this is probably going to get it. It hits everything in Affinity, kills Tarmogoyf, Scavenging Ooze, everything in Death Shadow, Delver, all the unprotected infect creatures, the small Eldrazi, and lands that turn into creatures. What a way to reveal revolt, but my goodness, Fatal Push is pushed for constructed magic in a way that is rarely seen. Wow. It wouldn't be a magic set without some dragons. Free Jam Region is 4 of anything and 2 red for a 4-4 four, four dragon with improvise and flying. You can pay 2 mana and it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, it's obviously powerful for limited play, clearly. The ability to get it out cheaper with artifacts is nice, and super fire breathing is nothing to scoff at, but beyond that I think we're good. The cost is a bit restrictive. Gotta love them dragons though, nice. Hungry Flames is the latest in the cycle of red burn spells that reminds us we'll never again see Searing Spear. And while dealing 2 damage to a player is nice, I think I can speak for most players when I say that they'd rather have the lower cost than the additional 2 damage. But hey, I'm a blue player, so <laughs> deal with your crap burn spells in standard. Gotcha. Green Wheel Liberator is 2 mana for a 2-1 elf warrior with revolt. It enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. The only thing that stops this card from being just so stupid is that it ends up with 3 toughness, which does make it particularly susceptible to Modern's removal suite. If it weren't for that, you'd be looking at the closest thing to Tarmogoy if we've seen in a while. Now if we're talking Standard, or even Frontier if that catches on, this could easily be a super solid card. 2 mana for a 4-3, and if you're playing Panharmonicon perchance? Oh, that's so ugly. That is just so ugly. Greenbelt Rampager is 1 green mana for a 3-4 Elephant. When it enters the battlefield, pay 2 energy. If you can, return it to its owner's hand and you get 1 energy. This can trigger a Volt. I like that, but let's focus on some insanity for a second. This is a 1 mana 3-4, there's no way around it, it just is a 1 mana 3-4. Now that we've come to terms with how ridiculous that is, even if you don't have the energy to play this, it gives you energy! How insane is that? That's awesome! What killer design work! And with Ether Hub, you get a 3-4 on turn 2, no problem. But the real value here, like what makes the Rampager truly outrageous, it enters the battlefield, then the trigger goes on the stack asking for you to pay 2 energy. While it's on the stack, use it to crew vehicles! Go crazy! Even if it goes back to your hand, you already crewed something! Then play it again, and do it again! Vehicles and elephants working together! Seriously, this combo is both hilarious and definitely effective! Greenbelt Rampager, you so dumb! Rishkar Pima Renegade is 3 mana for a 2-2 legendary creature elf druid. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 target creatures. Each creature you control with a counter on it has the ability to tap and add 1 green mana to your mana pool. I... sure? 
This is a crazy versatile card for one reason. Notice the second ability. Each creature you control with a counter on it, not just plus one plus one counters, any counter. That's open season for all your stuff. All kinds of counters and your creatures are going to be creating green mana from now until the end of time. So not only does this come down and bring four power with it, but it also enables mana dark mode on two other creatures if you want. That's extreme versatility. Cannot wait to see where this ends up. Winding Constrictor is one black and one green for a 2-3 snake. If one or more counters would be placed on an artifact or creature you control, that many of those counters plus one are placed on that permanent instead. If you would get one or more counters, you get that many of those counters plus one instead. Seriously, wizards? How many black-green cards are you going to push before literally every single commander player just gives up and plays Marin? Or any other black-green commander, if we're being honest. Look at Rayhan, the deck we built a month ago. This is crazy in there. Also, Skullbriar or Gave. Wizards, just, what are you doing? Black-green players have been spoiled these last few years. Seriously, we're in the age of Golgarian Commander right now. What a bomb uncommon, beyond impressed. Gonti's Ether Heart is the preview card revealed by our good friend the professor at Talarian Community College. You should definitely check out his video on it right here. Just click the link. It's hilarious with a pretty awesome guest star. You don't want to miss it. So check it out right there. We'll talk about it tomorrow so you don't freak out that I missed it. Deal? Deal. This is only the first of many videos coming your way on Ether Revolt. We have a lot of catching up to do, so stick to the channel for all the updates and information on the set that you'll ever need, including our own exclusive preview coming to you sometime tomorrow. So what do you think of the set so far? You have to admit, there are some friggin' powerful cards in here, right? Ether Revolt is going to shake up multiple formats, that's for sure. Please leave all of your thoughts in the comments and we'll talk about it. There's so much to go over. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. At this point, clearly the set is ridiculous, so if you want to pre-order boxes of Revolt right now, you can from TCG Player for only $90 each. $90! That's cheaper than a ton of stores. If you don't have a local game store or yours is overcharging way too much, this is the best deal you will find online. Click the link, helps the channel, we all win, enjoy.